really, really late stage Lyme looks a lot like Alzheimer's. Um, because generally who people who pass away from Lyme disease, it is because of the heart, the brain, or the immune system, um, which, uh, so Alzheimer's late stage, it's like where the bacteria is in the brain. And we're seeing like a lot of famous people in the public now coming out about their chronic Lyme disease and being misdiagnosed because um, it can look like a lot of other illnesses. Um, most people experience joint pain, that's kind of common, and headaches and mitigating pain, so pain that just moves throughout the body. Um, so it's kind of like, like living with the flu every day. Um, so people who initially get a bite, sometimes you get the bullseye ration, sometimes you don't. Um, it's kind of nice if you get the bullseye because that's kind of a telltale sign. But um, one of the other problems that the difference between ILADS and IDSA is that um, about the testing. So uh, IDSA is saying the testing is accurate, where ILADS is saying our testing is not accurate, and we've got to we've got to find better testing. In fact, uh, is it Maine or Massachusetts just passed a law that if you go in the ER, you get a test for Lyme and it says negative, you have to sign a consent saying this negative may not really be a negative. It's like, it's like the chances of getting a positive are worse than flipping a coin. It's super inaccurate. So there are kind of like two standard tests the CDC uses. It's the ELISA and the Western blot. And it's a two-tiered process. So the ELISA is probably one of the worst tests possible. But if you have like an acute right away and you have the right kind of uh, strain that they're looking for, then um, you can test. I mean, it's, most of us don't have positive ELISA tests because it, it, it's just ridiculous how inaccurate it is. Um, the Western blot um, looks for different antibiotics. And that, that's probably a more better test. There's a company out in California called Igenix, and they have the most sensitive Western blot. Um, but even after you get the test, you need to have um, a doctor that's called a Lyme literate doctor look at that test and interpret it. Um, because some the CDC may not recognize it as a positive test, but it doesn't mean it's not positive. Um, for example, I had three positive bands so I definitely had antibodies in my blood for it, but the CDC still wouldn't recognize that as a positive because uh, I, th I believe they say five bands is a positive test. But um, so you have to kind of do a symptomatic and, and blood work test. Um, and I talked about the CB57. Um, there is Dr. Horwich, I kind of men mentioned his name before, um, who's very involved in ILADS. He has an online test, uh, like a checklist you go through and um, check symptoms. Um, kind of a classic telltale sign of Lyme is that it's mi migrating pain. So it kind of every day it's different and moves around. Um, that's kind of a sign, but that, that's a good test um, to look at um, along with, um, of course, like scientific testing. Uh, some more naturopathic doctors will use um, energetic or frequency testing, like a biomeridian machine or uh, there's a lot of different um, names for, for that type of testing. Um, personally, I think those tests can kind of give you a direction to go. But um, for me, I really, again, that type A driven personality, I had to know. I had to know for sure. So I had, um, you know, the Western bot with three bands. I had a doctor look at my... Uh, blood under a live microscope. A naturopath will do that and diagnose based on that. Some of them, not all of them. And that's, that's uh, not FDA regulated. Um, so I did that test. And then I did like biomeridian, which is like, uh, it's like a almost like a lie detector to the central nervous system. Um, and that came back positive. And then, but again, I just, I wanted to know, I wanted to know for sure. So I, we invested in a test uh, put out by Advanced Labs, and this was developed by Dr. Horowitz again, I believe. And uh, it's, it's a blood culture. So they take your blood and um, culture it for a couple months. And if they see spirochetes in your blood at the end of a month or two, then, then it's a definitive uh, yes. And... Um, I think even after some of us get diagnosed, we go through a denial process, just like any grieving process. Um, 
you know, you don't, you don't want to face this illness or so you kind of go in this and I still do it, like get into denial. Oh, I'm fine. And then I'm like, no, this is real. I really have this, this illness. Um, and it, so I, yeah, it's like a $700 test. It's a really expensive test and it's, it's not considered like the only reason why the FDA didn't approve it is because it's expensive. Um, and, uh, you have to catch one spirochete in the blood. So if, if it's like in a dormant stage where it's hiding out in your tissues, then you're not going to catch it in the blood. So, um, some doctors will put you on treatment for two months to try to kind of aggravate the Lyme and bring it out before they'll do the testing like the Western blot or, um, or the blood cultures. Um, so it really just depends on the doctor. So if you're looking, if you're like, wow, I have someone that has a lot of those symptoms. Um, what, where do I go next? How do I look? And what I suggest is that you go to the ILADS website and look up a Lyme letter, a doctor, or um, look for local support groups that you can ask around about different doctors and who are educated. And we even have some doctors that are Lyme friendly. They're they're at least open-minded to look into it. Bacteria are different shapes and forms, and um, Borrelia is like a little spring. It's in the shape of a spring, and they call that a spirochete. So also syphilis is a spirochete. So there's no. different tests for all things, like arthritis has, they look for inflammation markers. Um, MS, they do brain scans or an MRI. Um, in fact, I had an MRI and um, a lot of people will get lesions in their brain or white spots that look like MS. So a lot of people get misdiagnosed. Um, uh, yeah, each, each Alzheimer's has, um, it's probably more of a symptoms. And then, because from, from what I understand with my grandfather is they couldn't officially diagnose, and maybe this has changed, but they couldn't officially diagnose as Alzheimer's until they actually do an autopsy. And I think it's just fascinating though that there's been some research done that on Alzheimer's brains that they found nine out of nine brains have spirochetes in them or Lyme bacteria. So, um, so I, yeah, there's, you know, and if you have MS, it doesn't mean you have Lyme disease. People can have MS without having Lyme disease. Um, so it's tricky because it's such an imitator.